Thank you for tuning in to the F5 Recovery Radio. This is One Pretty Ricky. I'm joined by my co-hosts, Kirsten Hooven and Adam Martin. We are so thankful uh, for you for being a part of this show. And we, of course, want to thank our sponsors, the F5 Project, as well as the Ridge Recovery and Treatment Center. On today's episode, we're going to talk about making amends and what that means and part of your recovery journey. So feel free to watch and follow along. And don't forget to subscribe as well. And we'd love to be able to have you. So today's topic is making amends. Oh. Mm-hmm. Good one. My sponsor is cringing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just right now. What are you going to say? Matt wanted me to tell you that you still owe him an amends for the hot Jordans you sold him. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't owe him an amends. So context is, is that I was drinking and I was like 19. I was like 21 or something. I don't even know. And I broke into cars, and there's a statute of limitations on this, so yeah, I cannot yeah, yeah. get okay, in trouble okay. for this. I hope I can't. I watch me have a warrant out later this afternoon. <laughs> but I broke into some cars, and I was like, so if someone's watching this and you're missing a pair of Jordans from 2003 or something like that, um, I broke into this car, and I found these Jordans, and I was like, awesome, I've never had a pair of Jordans. I'm so drunk. I'm going to take these. And then I went back to the house. I woke up the next day. I was like super remorseful and I couldn't remember where I got them. I was going to try and put them back. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just keep them. And then I put them on and they're like a size <laughs> like 17. They're like <laughs> insanely huge. So I'm guessing it was like a, probably a legit basketball player. I mean, right. Shaquille O'Neal size. Like, right. And I was like, these definitely don't fit me. Mm-hmm. And so then I, I, I went to Matt. He is the tallest guy I knew, <laughs> her husband. And I gave him, I was like, do you want these Jordans? And he's like, where did you get them from? I was like, they were given to me. (laughs) And then he's like, why would someone give you such large shoes? I was like, do you want them or not? And he was like, sure. And he still has them to this day. Like it's been over 20 years or it's probably been 20 years. He appreciates them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's saying I owe him an immense because I gave him stolen property. (laughs) I owe an amen. Oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure I did give. I'd make amends to him, but oh, he just wanted to yank your chain. Yeah, well done. I forgot all about that. <laughs> well, I think the first. I think the idea that you get sober and then like you get angelic or everything changes is so bizarre. Because the first, the first Christmas I was sober, I worked at pennies and I stole all of the gifts I gave to everyone that year and it's just like nothing changed except I got sober I still have that shady part of me that's just like oh that's a little naughty maybe I like that you know what I mean it's just there's just that part of you that's yeah. still kind of shady that's that midwest girl that's a little naughty that's a little Oop. I'm just gonna take this <laughs> Well, if the boots fit, I guess. Yeah, yeah they the, do. Especially these boots. Mm. Holy God. Oh. I know. They're pretty great. They're great. Yeah. Got, the- went to the hooker store. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're... Oh, it was a pocket. Oh, you can have change in here in case you need to she make She could put a 40-ounce malt liquor in yeah. that boot. <laughs> That's the boot that Casper from the movie Kids wish he had. Yeah. Instead does- of trying to sneak out with a 40-ounce in his pants. Does that mean I'm a terrible... I would be a terrible hooker if I have to give change. <laughs> there are change pockets on it. Anyway. <laughs> That's not my first be walking profession. down the street giving juice boxes yeah. to people. There you go. God. Yeah, stay hydrated. Damn. Yeah. You look unhappy. Let's talk. Yeah. Oh, that would be about $20. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have yeah. it? I have liberal credit arrangements. <laughs> yeah. You take the girl out of the trailer park, but oh. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but that does probably coincide with amends still screwing up. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, uh, amends are probably, I mean, every re- journey is different. Or, uh, I mean, some recovery uh, pathways don't even have an amends mm-hmm. portion, right? So it's hard to talk about things that are pretty z- zeroed in on that bec- mm-hmm. unless you're, I don't know, because some people just don't believe them. They're just trying to like leave their life behind and like move forward. Some are really emphasized in it that if you want to stay sober, you have to make these amends. Right. Um, and so I, you know, the way that I did, you know, did my amends or whatever, uh, and I still owe a lot. I mean, there's ones out there that are really, really hard to make. Mm-hmm. And then there's some out there I just, you know, people have died or 
you know, whatever. So it's different for everyone. But I'll, I'll say with like the guys that I've mentored or even myself with the amends that I've made, they're like so, um, they're so different every single mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. You know, because there was times where I made like amends and I felt like a piece of crap after. I was like, and I had like envisioned that I was going to feel great. Right. Like I was going to go make yeah. this right. <laughs> yeah. They were, I don't care how they respond. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I have no expectations. Yeah. And then I walked in and I was like, hey, I was wrong. Is there anything I can do to make it right? And then just like stone cold look at you and then like walk away or say something really mean or, you know, you can't ever replace that or whatever. And then you're just like, you know, it, it's like the full dep mm -hmm. depravity of like your past actions just kind of go on you and you Class. just... I don't know. Kind it can be triggering. Person. It can yeah. be, it can be like, oh man, I'm never, you know, your head gets the best. He was like, I'm never going to be better. I'm not, it's always going to be this way. Yeah. You know, I made an amends to a guy that I robbed back in, uh, it probably would have been around 2006 or something like that. And it was an ex employer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm friends with the guy who owns it now. And he's came to the jail and spoke with me and stuff, Jeff. Um, and he's and he wor was working there when I robbed the owner of this this company, mm -hmm. but I got fired from that company, and and then went home and got drunk, and then went to that I I don't even know how I ended up in this stolen U-Haul. I can't remember. Yeah. I just remember like <clears throat> leaving Ch Chumleys out in Moorhead, <laughs> right, yeah. and then I was in a U-Haul driving it. Like yeah. there's like a huge detachment there. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I like came to like I don't think pe many people understand how blackouts work, <laughs> right. but some, like you don't blackouts and passing out are not the not same the thing. Same, yeah. Like you can black out and come out of it like right. in, you know, it's kind of like it's like the alcoholic's version of Survivor. Like you wake <laughs> up and you're like, "Holy God, where am I?" And then you have to like figure it all out and not look like you're yeah. freaking out. Yeah, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and so I like come to and I'm like in this U-Haul and I was like, "Oh, I guess we're here now, mm -hmm. right?" And so I just like was. A plain survivor. I didn't. I didn't have any money. I didn't have nothing. I didn't have anywhere to go. It was raining outside, so I could see how I got there. Right. And then I just proceeded to to drive around, and then had ideas of breaking into places, and and uh, and obviously that place popped in my head because I know it well. I've been fired, and 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 so I I broke in to it and stole like the laptops and mm -hmm. and I stole the dilly bars out of the fridge like Aww. it was I, I know <laughs> and she's such a mom she's like he's like he stole thousands and thousands of, you stole the dilly the bars dilly what about the kids, kids? You know. uh, yeah. uh, and so anyways <laughs> I went on the run and then um it's a long story. We could probably dedicate a whole <laughs> podcast to this. But uh, I had to, I eventually, after I got sober, went back and I made amends to this guy. Mm -hmm. And this was like how important, um, this was like a life lesson for me on like how impactful amend, or how hurtful they can be, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by hurtful is not the amends itself, but not taking it seriously. So like when I went and made amends to him, he... I asked him, is there like anything I can do to make this right? And he was like, well, you can pay me back. And I was like, and my head, my ego gets involved. And it's like, well, pay you back for what? You got everything back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, but the, I'm not allowed to like in my recovery, I say that yeah. I'm just right. allowed. I yep. like, I do whatever I can do to make this right. And so <clears throat> I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then, uh, and then I got, I started drinking again, like a year later. Mm. Right. And then was gone for years and then came back and went through the amends process and had completely forgot I made that amends. Yeah. And so when I ran into him at in this current sobriety, so this was 10 years ago, I was like mm -hmm. only a couple months sober mm -hmm. and I ran into him at the at a restaurant and it was him and Jeff. Right. And so I went to Jeff. and I was like, Jeff, should I make amends to him? He's like, yeah, you should, I mean. The time it's yeah, presented it's itself, one, yeah. right? right. Yep. <clears throat> and so I go and I was like, hey, you know, I was wrong for stealing all that stuff and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And he he looked at me and he was like, You've already made this amends to me. Mm. And it it was at that moment I realized like how serious it is to the people that we've victimized, right? Right? because uh, they remember it, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like a part of their life. Yeah. And so at that moment, like, I realized, like, 
Like if I'm going to like actually live in recovery, I have to stay in recovery. Yeah. And so that was a big, like that, that probably hurt more than making amends where I hurt people more. Mm. You know? Yeah, for real. Because yeah. it was like the first time I realized like I was all talk. Right. Yeah. You know and how mean? many times in our drinking did we say, I'm sorry? It just becomes meaningless to say right. you're sorry. It becomes mm-hmm. completely meaningless. And when you get sober, I've watched this happen over and over. <laughs> People get sober and they get like on fire with recovery, like, oh my gosh. And so they do steps one, nine, and 12. They just automatically <laughs> go, I'm an addict. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to go be a counselor. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it's exactly how it goes oh, every man. single time. Really it really is. That but is you so got accurate. it. Oh, yeah, my gosh. That better. is crazy. That I've is never so seen accurate. someone systematically yeah. break it down. Yeah, every but. time. And it's great that they're so, you know, excited about their recovery. But sure. let's do this in order. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. you just, like, you can't just get there. Because sorry means nothing. And truthfully, like the amends is not the sorry part. It's not sitting down with someone to say you're sorry. It's the day-to-day where you have a living amends, where you mm-hmm. continue to show them that. And one of the coolest stories that I had in in parenting is when my youngest son, when they're like, oh, your son's involved in bullying, and I'm like, oh, are they bullying him? You know, no, he was the bully, which is like, heart-wrenching to a mother because we only have one rule in our house and that's don't be a dick you know what I mean like there's just one rule and so anyway so we found out about this and then I thought I don't know what to do because that's most of parenting I have no idea what I'm doing and I just thought okay what would we do in AA and so we had him uh, we talked to him you know for a while about it and then we had him make amends to the kid and then to the kids' parents, because we're like, you hurt their, you hurt their heart too. You know what I mean? Because you hurt their kid or whatever. And I said, but here's the part. This part is the easy part. From now till whenever, you are this kid's protector. You know what I mean? When you see this kid being bullied, you stick up for him. I don't care. That's just the price you have to pay. And so, you know, in the beautiful ending that happened on this one now they're really good friends you know and it's just worked out beautifully but i mean there's times when it doesn't work out that beautiful but it's that living amends that creates the future of complete freedom Mm -hmm. like when you make your amends you you, there's no place i can't go there's nobody i can't talk to right there's i have no more like oh god who's that i have to dodge you know what i mean there's no more of that Mm -hmm. but to start paying people back and what is that? I can't remember who said, like, I don't want to pay them back. I need my money. And they're like, it's actually their money. And you still have it. <laughs> yeah. So give it back. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But that was the coolest amends story I've had as a parent, yeah. you know? Well, I think it was hard. So when I, my first, when I first made amends, I didn't have a sponsor. Yeah, so like, so my idea of like making amends was just more of like, okay, you know, I was gonna write these letters, and I had like written out like all these letters, to all these different people, because I had like wrote a list, and I was like, sweet, I'm gonna just write all these letters. But then, like, you know, my attorney was like, no, you can't send these, because I was still in the middle of like court proceedings for oh, sure. everything I was doing, because I wanted to like write and just apologize to the ownership group um, that I had taken money from for my previous job and all this, and it's like, well, no, you like. I know where your heart is, but like that, you like that's not gonna like. What are you looking to do? And I was like, well, I'm I'm sorry, and I'm I'm in the process of paying them back. Mm-hmm. Like I had already made some um, some payments, but I wanted to like put some instead of just being like, hey, here's some money that I have to pay it back. I wanted to like put like a letter with it, and he was like, no, you can't do that. Like you have to like we have to finish this court proceedings and figure out whatever's going to happen first. And then if you decide to do that down the road. And then I, I got upset and I was like, like, I'm feeling really, really yeah. bad right now. I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing and you're telling me that I can't do the right thing. And so then it just sent me in a spiral. But then when I eventually like talked with my sponsor and really kind of like understood the whole, the purpose yeah. isn't just like writing all the things you did wrong or I'm sorry for, List, you know, writing a yeah. list and just saying I'm sorry for all these things. It's that process of like, okay, well, how are you going to show that to them? Because it's I'm not like, to how? alleviate your guilt. Right. It's to make and it right. And that's what I wanted. And that's yeah. all I was yeah. just I was like, I'm just feeling this big. I want to be right. 
back on track. When I have and somebody I say, it's them, okay. Yeah, we understand. I just want them to, and then to not get that opportunity, yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is dumb. I hate recovery. This is like, yeah. you know, and That's I like, didn't want to do the program because yeah. I was like, this is, this doesn't make any sense. I made a mistake, a really, really big one, yeah. a very costly <laughs> one, <laughs> right? So like, but I want to just be able to like, say I'm sorry and like move forward but it was like well that's not how that works and it was such a like different because like as a kid you get told you know when you yeah you know you make you know you say say you're sorry and you apologize mm -hmm. you, you know, my, my sister would fight like my mom would make us hug it out and then it was just done like it was just like so that's what I wanted I just wanted yeah. things to just be done and then it was like well no amendments don't work like that they aren't just yeah. you say you're sorry and you're done because that person still has to feel it this company yeah. still has to like get their money like all these things have to continue to happen, but I just didn't quite understand, especially like the early on of like how much more that's supposed to mean yeah, and how a, much more yeah. that's supposed to change. And the fact that I still have to make amends now and it's been almost six years. I'm oh like, yeah. I still they have to make more amends? Yeah. I'm like, I thought I was done with this. I know. You know, and it was just such a different. Making amends does make you screw up less things because I don't want to make amends more, <laughs> yeah. you know, especially to my husband or whatever, but it just happens that you have to do that. But it was, like you were saying, the reaction they have is none of your business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you make the amends to better your life and, yeah. you know, complete that circle or whatever, but the reaction they have is none of your business. Right. But anyway. I imagine some guy, some new guy watching this podcast and be like, amends? <laughs> I just want to stop using math, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Just so we're clear. This is like a year down after being, you know, in recovery. Yeah, so do the right. steps in this order. This is like advanced, you yeah. know. Yeah, like, don't go just willy-nilly. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, yeah, don't do it without some kind of mentorship because you'll just like, yeah. I've seen a lot of people, like Kirsten said, they do the three steps and they're like made mm -hmm. a couple apologies and then they, right. you know, now they're going to yeah. be a counselor and tell people how to be sober, which mm -hmm. is like, the epitome of LAC. So it's, <laughs> I totally get it. I do. I do. Kirsten is so LAC. Yeah, I get and it, I she's get like it. the hybrid of like being in recovery and like LAC. And so, but I'll tell you, like most, like there's a reason that I think peer supports need to be involved at the table everywhere. Yep. Because a lot of times you'll get a suggestion about how to be in recovery. And I think LAC is in peer supports. There's a, there's a huge split. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In 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 like process and in in philosophy and stuff like that, and as long as they stay in their lanes, like the last thing that a counselor should be doing is telling people how to be in recovery, right? Deal with the trauma, yeah, deal yeah, with yeah, the medications, yeah. mm -hmm. deal with the, you know the you know the the children at home, like right. you know deal with the person, mm -hmm. and let the peer supports deal with the recovery, right. right? Because a lot of time I can't tell you how many times someone came to some meeting that I'm at and be like, well, my counselor says that I'm supposed to have seven sponsors. I'm like, your counselor's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Is your counselor yeah. ever had a sponsor? He's like, no, he doesn't, Do he's not in works? recovery or anything. It's like, so okay, it's like, okay, I guess yeah. when I want to have a heart surgery, I'm going to go to a plumber and ask him what he thinks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, stay in your lanes. But for some reason, when it comes to, and this is the only thing, like, in the medical industry, when it comes to like recovery and addiction, mm -hmm. everyone has an opinion. For real. Right? And it's a psychiatric diagnosis, right. right? Or with bipolar, they're like, well, he just needs to slow down or something. You know, mm -hmm. or it's like, when, like mental health is like really hard to like yeah. navigate when everyone has an opinion about it. Yeah. Because they think, because they, went through an episode in their life where they thought that they had it they or something. Yeah. yeah, they were sad. And it was like, well, I, you know, I just stopped being sad. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, now you're just an asshole. Yeah. Like, <laughs> can you stop doing that too? You picked up a new hobby. <laughs> you know, but when it comes to like a heart surgery, people are, you don't have people sit, standing by the doctor being like, you know, doctor, I would do it this way. Yeah. Because they know their place, mm -hmm. right? And plus they're not allowed in the operating room. <laughs> That we need to probably not let people be allowed in treatment. Yeah. <laughs> and just let people who know what treatment is and how mm -hmm. to work it and stuff, you know, what. So anyways, yeah. I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for that one. <laughs> no, um, I don't think so. <clears throat> not from counselors that are actually in recovery. It's going to be from counselors who aren't. Right. And there's like this thing that's happening where it's just like, 
I think sometimes, you know, when you've dedicated your life to a cause mm -hmm. and then someone comes down the pot, because I, it's like, I think about it, like what if someone comes into this industry and is a better Adam Martin? Mm. You know what I mean? And I think counselors, when peer support started making their way into the recovery world and addiction world or whatever, it was just like, you know, you see this guy come in and he can win over anyone within minutes because of his experience and his life and his recovery. And he can probably do what a counselor uh, has been trying to do for years. Right. And the, I think it creates a level of jealousy and it creates a le level of resentment, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like... Um, like two people in a relationship that just don't understand each other and you know you start going to to meetings or whatever yeah. and then you start getting better and then that person's just like but i've been here the whole time right. i think that this is that yeah mm -hmm. it was hard to navigate that being a, pr a counselor in recovery mm -hmm. having peer support come up it's like they didn't have to do any of the work they don't know any of the ethics <laughs> they just did the i'm sober i'm sorry and i'm gonna help you route you know what i mean so it was just like Am I the redheaded stepchild of psychology? I mean, am I like <laughs> yeah. the know nothing counselor yeah, yeah. or whatever? But it just felt so unsafe or willy nilly or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there was like this, like, they're going to take my job and they haven't had to pay any student loans. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to me that, that, cause I've heard that before. It's just yeah. like, there's a fear that peer supports are just going to take over mm. and and pro like yeah, because they could become counselors, right. you yeah. know, and they could. It, and if it's, if I had to make a decision between a counselor who's, who's not experienced in recovery, and then a counselor who is, and you know, between yeah. the two, like, and they could be both wear both hats, or whatever. Like from a business standpoint, right. it makes sense to hire this person because they can fit into two yeah. departments. Right. Um, but it's not happening. Right. There's not a lot of peer supports that are coming. In, to get your job. No. Like you're, it's almost like they're looking at peer supports as the people at the border. <laughs> you know, like, they're like, what if they come here and take our jobs? And it's like, well, work harder. That's yeah. what you tell them. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? I know. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> My counselor was Bob. So. <laughs> but it does, it taps into something and then you realize this is my crap and I need to figure this out. Yeah. Why, am I, why am I afraid of this? Mm -hmm. Why can I not support this or help make it better? Um, and I, there, I mean, there's just like safety things that, that made me nervous mm -hmm. with like, okay, please don't give them a ride alone. I mean, I know every, we're all nice here, but let's be real. We're yeah. all not all safe here. So managing peer supports is a whole different ball game. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the professionalism isn't necessarily that there's a lot of learning. There's a huge learning curve mm -hmm. on working in a company yeah <laughs> you know it's not like working on the assembly line or out on the construction site or whatever but even there there's got to be a level of accountability mm -hmm. trust you know and so i can't tell you how many times that we've we've had conversations about how people talk around the office yeah. <laughs> you know there's like two different groups there's the people that are very professional and then there's like the peer supports where uh, the, yeah. you can hear them coming down the hall <laughs> you know <laughs> it is it they are they are a fun bunch yeah. yes. but there's been times i'll be sitting with like a judge in the conference room and i'll just be like oh you know fi project and yeah. you know professional and then all of a sudden you're like yeah and then i blew up my butt <laughs> or whatever like as they're walking down the <laughs> the hallway and i'm like uh or i come to the office one day and then they paint it on the wall one day at a fucking time and it's like <sighs> you guys thought i'd have to correct this but but here's the thing like i'm all about it yeah, yeah. so it's like if they want that to change they probably need a different ceo because yeah. it's right. because i am a peer support i'm not a counselor i'm not a doctor i'm not a and nurse it works. and it yeah. and it yeah. works so yeah. and have you seen i know we're getting totally off topic here but um yeah <laughs> good job Ricky. i was actually talking with my husband this morning about peer support and i we were saying because we I was mentioning the, like, I'm sober, I'm sorry, the three-step process. Anyway, do you see that becoming their program? Like, that becomes their recovery instead of them having their own recovery? Is that a part of what's required, or I'm not sure how that works? Well, peer support in North Dakota is, like, very new still, yeah. right? And so there's a lot of different... I, I think the thing I appreciate, appreciate about it 
is the same thing that I appreciate about sober homes. Mm -hmm. They're all different, mm -hmm. right? So you could go to one, it's very 12-step oriented. You could go to another one. They were like anti-12 steps and very Christian-based or something. Like, yeah. and, and, I, and I'm absolutely opposed to do, creating any mandates yeah. because, because the more mandates that we kind of like sip, like, yeah. then everyone will look the same. Right. And then we're only gonna we're gonna do the exact same thing that the As justice system place, yeah. is doing, right. where it's only meant for one kind of person, right. Right. a person that got in trouble, and went to court, realized they did something wrong, and changed their behavior right. after they served their time or whatever. That's yeah. what the court system's right. meant for. The sober homes, there's so many different ones of them that that it has the ability to attract and help a variety kind of people. Mm -hmm. right. You know, there's some that accept medicated assisted treatment. There's some that don't. There's religions. There's there's 12 step. There's some that have really no rules other than just you know don't break the law, right? So it's I appreciate that. But the problem with with uh, like peer support is that um, it's kind of like being in a, the recovery rooms and somebody got sober and they're so amped up about their new life. This cloud nine. That their way is the only way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's the same thing like in prison where most of the old timers aren't the ones causing trouble. Mm -hmm. It's the new people. They're coming in trying to make a name for themselves. They get gossipy. They talk crap. Mm -hmm. They whatever. And so it just takes a level of like of, of experience yeah. to understand that there's a better way and we can all do this together. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of new people in peer support yeah. and, and the concerns with LACs and doctors and nurses about peer support in North Dakota is very relevant Yeah, and I completely understand it. But if we don't do something with them, it's always going to be yeah. that way. So yeah. we either need to combine our efforts and work together and teach ethics yeah. and teach professionalism and, te you know, because uh, if we don't, then it's just going to be this huge chasm, and then they're going to start up their own little organizations, yeah, and then it's just going to create hostile yeah. work environments within the industry. Because it could be so, I mean, it's really so necessary and so amazing. And there's just like with everything else, just tweaks that need to happen. Mm -hmm. And like the people that are, you know, intimidated by it or whatever, that's their own stuff. They got to figure that out on their own, you know. Mm -hmm. But. Because there will always be something new and shinier and bright. There just always will be, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I, there's a there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Because it was just kind of the last seven years or so. I mean, peer support technically is only like six years old in North Dakota. Right. Six years is not a long time, mm -hmm. you know. And for a new industry to to just kind of start up and. And then the, the providers that became providers had never had supervision of peer supports before. And the treatment centers got scared and didn't want to do it. And they fought back. And then there was arguments about money. Yeah. And it just, it became, it was like the epitome of the reason why AA didn't get involved right, with, exactly. with paying sponsors <laughs> yeah. or affiliating themselves with the treatment centers and stuff and kept it anonymous. And I can completely... Yeah. They eliminated all the factors that could have tore them apart. Yeah. Because, like, when you're in different, like, I've already seen it. If you're in different providers and you have a way that you do recovery and they have a way that they do recovery and you're both being paid for it, then when people are, like, coming to you and saying, you know, I'm thinking about getting F5 as a, well, you know what F5 does. Right. Right? Yeah. Or you know what this company does or whatever. You, you're probably better off coming with us. And it makes it more about the money than it does that person. Yeah. But that can change in time and experience and education mm -hmm. um, and partnerships or whatever. But you have to be willing to like let it give to give it that time and be collaborative minded rather than um, uh, survival minded. Because yeah. when yeah. you made it about money, you made it about survival. Yeah. And the last thing I'm going to do is refer people to you when I need that money to pay my staff. Right. And so if we can work collaboratively together, that sh wouldn't be an option and it'll eliminate all the drama. Right. Which, it's true. Speaking yeah. of collaboration, F5 Project and The Ridge have sponsored our podcast. So we want to thank them so much for 
helping us being able to do this. We also want to shout out Tellwell. They are an amazing, amazing organization that records this for us in this fantastic studio and built our awesome backdrop. So shout out Tellwell as well. Um, so today's topic, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're talking about making amends. And so another question I wanted to kind of tackle and think for this next section is what makes making amends hard? Like what's your hardest like amends that you've ever had to make? You have to say wow, I'm not going to say. <laughs> no, no, it's like not specifically what's the say worst well? thing you've ever done here? <laughs> Let's get it on TV. But like, what, like what makes it, what makes like making that amends so tough? Well, all of them are tough. Well, You're essentially them. going and telling someone that you were wrong. It's yeah. ego. I mean, some of I've them are easier than others, though. Sure, well, yeah. but they're still hard. Yeah. You still have to go and apologize to someone, essentially, right. and tell them that you were wrong, or they may not even know about it. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. well, some of those maybe should be avoided. I yeah. mean, you have yeah. a sponsor, so you know, but yeah. I've yeah. had amends be made to me where they're like, hey, uh, Kirsten, I talked bad about you for a long time. I'm really sorry about that. I'm like, you did? I thought we were cool. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Oh, man, that was like the, I remember. Those are so bad. Yeah, there was a guy that came to me, and he's like, he's like, and I personally think that there was like ways that alcoholics and addicts manipulate oh, for sure. to, because they don't like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of trauma there and there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of growth that needs to happen. But a guy came to me and I personally think that the reason he made the amends is because he wanted me to know. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And Cause so he came okay. to me and was like, Adam, I was wrong. I character assassinated you behind your back. I talked about you a lot to other people, gossiped. And I was just like, and he was like, and it was about your character and your integrity. <laughs> and I was like, and he's like, I was wrong and I want to make that right. What can I do? And I was like, nothing, I guess. Yeah. I appreciate the amends. Stop and then he walked away. I was like, and I, it just blew my yeah. mind Thanks. Yeah. because I was like, I never conceived that that guy would ever talk bad about me. Yeah. Mm. And so then it just like, it created more harm. Yes. Yeah. And that was like it, the thing that, that we talk to you know make the amends unless it's going to create more harm right. yeah. yep. to you or others or you know or whatever yep. and so that one hurt like yep. it hurt yeah for my real feelings. i know yeah i was like this is amends suck yeah yep. i'm Just, definitely not going to go to everyone i ever talk yeah, shit about no kidding <laughs> you know because yeah. that could be the, just the day yeah. but yeah if you if it creates more harm than good then uh, avoid it yeah. yeah, that one's that whatever whoever that came up rough. with the concept of yeah. make amends to people that you gossiped about when they don't know about it is an idiot. Like For I, real. I, that idiot. is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. Because yeah. that person probably had no idea, and now you just made them have less trust in recovery. Yeah. Right. right. There's pe now these guys in these rooms are talking shit about me behind my back. Yeah, I right. knew it. Yeah. I know. Uh -huh. Just have your living amends be. Don't do that anymore. Yeah. And like if somebody says. Hey, I don't know what to think about Adam. Just be like, I don't know. I think he's pretty badass. You can leave it at that. That's yeah, your living right. amends. Don't be a dick anymore. Yeah, yeah. don't be a dick and stop <laughs> gossiping. And when people want to gossip with you about that person or anybody, take the high road out. Mm -hmm. For real. That's the amends. Right. That's the action. Yeah. 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 Was, I mean, I think one of my toughest ones was with talking to my sister because then, like, after I made that amends, I was like, Lisa, I'm really sorry. Just... You know, because that's my best friend, right? Like, it's closest person to me. Um, I was like, all right, you know, hey, this is, I have addiction, da da da, da. Just, But, like, I kept messing up in a lot of other areas, and so then I kept having to come back and, like, apologize for things. Oh, you're that guy. And then she was like... <laughs> <laughs> but, then, I, but then it was like, it was hard, because she was like, you already did, like, that. not yeah. like you already made this yeah. spin, but, like, when are you going to stop? Like, she literally said that, and I was like... I was just horrified because I was like, I don't like, I'm not. Like, how do I say? It? How do I say that I'm not? Like, I'm, like I'm, I'm still human, but like, I'm trying to humanize myself to like my sister, who's not in any sort of recovery. Like, yeah. doesn't understand that this is a part of the process that I have to go through. Or my sponsor tells me, no, I'm just yeah. kidding. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like one of those things. Like, no, I have to. Like, when I when I do something wrong, I have to apologize. Like, well, you can just stop. And I was like, I can't. If I could have just stopped, I would have stopped before. I would have been stopped. I would have stopped everything. But I can't stop. I'm so like, that I'm was still... like the I'm sorry. It just means less yeah. and less after a while. Right. Yeah. And, but it was just like tough. But I'm like, I still have to keep. And like it got farther in between. Like like if I made amends today, you'd be like, 
a year from now. You know, like it was yeah. just like more time would happen between them. But then I still would have to go back and do it again to people who are close to me. And then it was just like, this is in to. recovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, you don't have to do this anymore. I'm like, no, I, I do. Yeah. And then having to explain why I have to make this amends to this person when they're just like, no, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Like Ricky, mm-hmm. like, she's like, what'd you keep Ricky's screwing up? It was just dumb things with huh. family mm-hmm. issues and other stuff that I would just yeah. not be very helpful. Look at you throw them under the bus and ask them that question. Well, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm just Jeez. wondering. Like, in recovery, you yeah. know, I mean, I like, I continue I to, to be a power rat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we yeah. shouldn't mention Why did you not bring your four step here today, Ricky? <laughs> you need to show the world. Right. Page 37. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That, uh, that, but that's the hard, like, the easy part is because I'm here and everyone's like, you know, back in California, so I can just. Just absolve, like, oh, you yeah. know, I'm not going to get involved, which... Well, I just, I scenario it out, right? Yeah. So, like, let's say, hypothetically, the same life existed, except you didn't make those amends. Mm-hmm. But then, would it have been worse? Would they, they'd be like, then they, mm-hmm. like, all this stuff is happening to them, and right. that, you, you know, you're doing whatever, and you're not showing any remorse, or you're not even saying, you know, right. making amends or whatever, even though the the current scenario is, is that you're repetitively making these amends, scenario that out to the other side right. it would have been worse yeah. you know what i mean yeah. the other scenario is is that you would have stopped earlier right right like stop doing the actions and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the men's would have meant probably a little bit more right. than they did but like i think best case scenario which was probably in their head a worst case scenario is that the behavior wasn't changing and he was apologizing all the time but for you right. you were growing mm-hmm. the shitty thing about it is it, they probably felt it was at their expense, right. you know? So I think probably if, if it was a guy that I was mentoring and even for myself, you know, cause I have that same mm-hmm. thing, you know, especially with people who are close, you yeah. know, because like the, the best thing about a family is that you get to have the family. The worst part of it is you all live together. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, you're all, you see every, you're all the worst things about each other, all your defects of character. And it's really hard to have grace every yeah. single day. <laughs> yeah. Right. Baby gets up today and I was like, and I'm used to getting, getting a hug. And then lately she's like in the morning, she's just like, Rah. and I was just like, well, go take your ass to daycare yourself then. You know what I mean? And then I walk away and I'm like, does she still call you Adam? She, she is. So she calls me, what does she call? She calls me princess now. Oh Yeah. <laughs> and she's, she's princess with yellow dress. Oh, okay. And yeah. I'm I'm Princess Daddy. Okay. And then and then Mommy. She she gets to keep her name. Yeah. Um, Queen. And then and then I get to every night I, I get to tell the big bad wolf story, which it's me being the hero. Of course. Right? Of course like Big it Bad is. Wolf saw the <laughs> princess in the yellow dress and then Big Daddy showed up and kicked his ass. And she's like, again, again. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and she's like, but Princess Daddy. I'm like, oh. I was like, I was trying Almost to had it. Drop that part off. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Just a spoonful of humility with it, yeah. But it's yeah. the same with it. I mean, companies and churches or whatever. They're all, the concept of all those things is a really great thing or whatever. But then you fill it up with people. Mm-hmm. And people are just like a pinball machine with multiple p- balls in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Have you ever played those? I mean, it gets chaotic. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just watching one ball, it's chaotic because it just goes really fast. But now you got those pinball machines that got like 17 balls just going <laughs> everywhere, and you're and it's just it, it's chaos, right. and you're just you're going to clash. Mm-hmm. So, repetitive amends is a good thing right. because nobody's perfect, and uh, and if you don't make the amends, then it means that you don't care. Right. So even if it is repetitive, mm-hmm. there's process, yeah, there's growth, it. especially for addicts and alcoholics. Mm-hmm. And to overcome that fear to be able to say, I screwed up. And I'm, it's easy to say I'm sorry when I know that people are going to be watching and see what a great person I am and oh. how humble and kind, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it's really hard when somebody really annoys the shit out of me or whatever and I screw up, then I have to make amends even yeah, though they tough. screwed yeah. up and that sucks oh. so bad. But to just say like, I'm sorry without saying, well, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you were a dick. You yeah. know what I mean? Everybody wants mm. justice yeah. on others, but they want grace for themselves. Right. For sure. For That's, sure. I've seen people <laughs> legitimately do the same thing mm-hmm. that they're judging people for, yeah. but it's different right? Yeah. because they don't understand. I'm mm-hmm. like, ah. Oh. 
That's funny because they say the same yeah, thing. Weird. Right. Right. Or like when I <laughs> I run a red light or whatever, and then I judge the guy behind <laughs> me for doing it too. <laughs> but at least I didn't do it as bad as him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Dude, no, I get excited. I was like, yeah, we made it. And I like want to like high five in the mirror. <laughs> Maybe that's terrible. No. Because I was like, yeah, like, because I felt like if I, I sped up enough so he could get through too, you know. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. You <laughs> serious to do that? That's <laughs> what your thought process <laughs> is? Like, we made it. And I was like, yeah, that's, maybe that's well, I, mean, it's I make it through and then I look back and I'm like, I can't believe you actually went through. <laughs> no, I was like, I'm speeding up even faster to make Somebody sure they can get Somebody should arrest that guy. turned red <laughs> while I was going through it. That guy was a hard stop. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he, oh, no. he uh -huh. was like, you know what? That guy did it. No. Yeah. No, because no, then I feel, I feel guilty when like I do it and the person doesn't go. And I was like, oh, man, maybe I, you know, maybe it was me. But then we both go. Then it's like, all right, cool. You know, it's like. Interesting. Yeah. Just like, hey, fine. We did it. We got through it. Yeah. Man, the other day I was in the in the intersection and I, uh, I, w I just wasn't paying attention. I was like gapped out, like staring. And for some reason, subconsciously, when vehicles move, I start moving. <laughs> yeah, right? for real. They're Especially turning. if they're next to me. Yep. And so the problem with that 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 is the the turn lane. Right. Yeah. Because they're sometimes going. it turns green mm -hmm. and yours still stays red, but so he starts moving forward. And so then I wasn't like paying attention. And then I noticed he moving and I started driving. And all of a sudden the turn side on that on the on the opposite side was going. And then he stops and he stares at me and he's like, What the <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like driving and I look up and it's like hard red. And I was like, oh, oh sorry. sorry. <laughs> that's, <okay. laughs> that's me. Sorry about that. Now it'd be really something if the guy behind me was like, I'm going yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And Ricky's like, we did it. Yep, then you got then high I five would be the like, mirror. we did it. <laughs> damn the man. Solid. And God the damn law. the street lights. Yeah. We did it. It's the government trying to control our lanes. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, that's funny. You could build out a whole philosophy based on traffic. Yeah. But anyway, oh. yeah, yeah. So men's are tough, man. They, <laughs> they for the smaller ones or like medium sized ones, it really could just comes down to like pride and ego. You know, right. like if I owe a huge financial amends to someone, mm -hmm. it's you know it's typical that a guy will think to himself, "I'm just going to save up enough money." And and just yeah, pay it do off. Yeah, the big thing. Right. right? Yep. But even with that, ego comes with it. Because right. I just walked over and just put a $5,000 check down. Right. I look good. Yeah. I must be doing well. Right. Right. Uh, and so if you make the, like, the payments, though, like the mm -hmm. $20 a week or, yep. you know, a couple hundred dollars a month, and you have to do that for years, mm -hmm. like, there's no ego with that. There's no pride with it. You've, you're, you're... You have to have accountability. You have to have yeah. consistency. That, you know, and and people will normally just not do it, right? Right. Yeah. And when you start hitting financial struggles, it's the first thing to go. Right. Yeah. You know For real. I mean? Yep. Yeah. And so, and it's basically not your money. Like if you took money yeah. from someone or whatever, yep. you're just giving them their money, money back. back. Yeah. 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 It wasn't you know, yours ever. You're not paying a fine. You're paying <laughs> borrowed money that right. you stole or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Um, and so as long like that's it's ego and pride, 100. Mm -hmm. Every single time that I've seen someone not willing to make a certain amends or they don't follow through with it, it's all been a level of ego. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do this stuff. Right. One, one, nine, and twelve. What's 20 bucks a week? Yeah. Well, it adds up. They're not up. even yeah. going to notice. They're richer than I am. Right. Yeah. They don't deserve you know? it. All this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't owe. I'm not giving the money to that medical <laughs> establishment. They've been stealing money from people <laughs> themselves. It's Justification. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, just, yeah. you minimize <laughs> it. You rationalize it. Yeah. You justify it. Yeah. The, and it, that's why I'm saying it's all ego because mm -hmm. it's always your head telling you that you don't need to do something or you do need to do something that's not healthy for you. Right. You know, it's just this constant battle between the id and the super ego, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you're sitting in the middle like, that's a great idea. <laughs> I'm just not going to make amends and, oh, I should use meth? Okay. <laughs> right. And then you got this other side. It's just like, you're a piece of crap. Right. You're a horrible human being. It's yeah. just a war inside your head. Yeah. And you're just trying to navigate it. So a lot of times it's just like, that's why the sponsor or the mentor yeah. is perfect. Yeah. Because he's outside of that try. 
you know, the ego, the id, and the super ego going mm -hmm. back and forth trying to navigate. And you're emotionally attached to both. Right. You yep. know, so then you got this other guy that comes in and it's just like presents this case mm -hmm. and it's logical. And so it appeals, you know, to, to, to the ego and the super ego because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that makes sense. Right. Now they have evidence and to, yeah. and, you know, lived experience and it just kind of trumps that terrible, mm -hmm. terrible, impulsive yeah. thought process yeah. of like, I should use, I should, uh, I should spend more time with that girl instead of spending time you know, at work or yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. right? And so mentorship and sponsorship is by far the trump card. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's fear. It's fear that keeps us from doing that. But like in, when it says you're going to know a new freedom and a new happiness, mm -hmm. you know, all of that line in the big book, it is true that like being accountable creates this freedom where I'm not afraid to answer my phone anymore. I'm not afraid to look through my emails. Right. I'm not afraid to go get the mail. Um, the sticker on my front door is not an eviction notice anymore it's probably yeah. vote for me whatever they put on your door <laughs> anyway <clears throat> but it's just fear that keeps us from doing that and it keeps us separated and that just is the the one thing that keeps addiction flourishing is to be separated but if you go into a meeting and you talk about like having to make amends or my dumb sponsor said i have to do this or whatever uh, other people relate to you. And then you feel like, okay, I'm not doing this alone. I'm doing the right thing. I'm not doing this because of the outcome that's going to happen. I'm doing it because I need to do it so that I can stay in recovery and stay healthy. And there's so many more moving parts to that. But before you even get here, you're going to have done your fourth step and your fifth step and all of those things so that you will be ready and like emotionally mature enough to be able to say... Hopefully. So, yeah, You've well, hopefully, things. hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's there the are goal. other platforms out <laughs> okay, there. Okay, yeah, there yeah. are. <laughs> so, uh, if but you got any that's questions, that's just mine. That's just yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> some some are just like completely disregard and just make it more kind of like a scientific approach and yeah. and just like well, this is why I am the way I am. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, it doesn't talk much about trauma, does it? Right. You know. Yeah, you still but that's did your, that stuff. I mean, that's your like that's mm -hmm. yeah. cool. Yep. And I would never say that there, any path is like a dumb way to go because I think that they all have their benefits and then we have no monopoly on recovery like right. it is that's why i love that there's no real actual definition mm -hmm. outside of what samsa is trying you know Sam, yeah. this is the definition right. of recovery oh, it's like you're the sure. government yeah. stop defining us right. let us define, define it, ourselves we can't pay for it blah yeah. blah blah right. yeah so there's a variety of ways out there so if they, if amends is in it that's cool right. I think that there's a lot more impact that can happen in your life if there is, right. but it doesn't necessarily mean it, like just because you're making amends doesn't mean you're going like to like it's recovery. Like right. there's different forms of recovery. Maybe it's ten years down the road before you yeah. make it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think no in, when I, I think my first after I like I got over myself in that first like amendment, then I was like, all right, cool. I just did my fourth step. I did uh, did my fifth step. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm like feeling so low after all these things of just literally rattling out all the things I did wrong. So I was like, let's just keep this feeling going, which was like my addict brain of like, well, you're already low. Let's just make all these amendments. So I literally was like calling and texting everyone I possibly could <laughs> and making amends and getting like no responses. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like, I'm just, I'm already feeling bad and depressed. Like, let's just keep this feeling yeah. going. And like, it was... Like, I wasn't, I mean, I was making amends, but I was just more of, like, trying to just stay in this, like, really, really low place and just overdoing it. And, like, over, like, not that I was over making amends, but I was just, like, trying to make as many amends as possible because I was like, all right, sweet. Because once I get out of this, once I, like, finish my yeah. list of people that I have to make amends to, then I'll be better. So then I made all these amends, called everyone I, you know, everyone that I could or, you know, felt like I was comfortable enough making and calling, writing letters to, and then, like, sent them off, like, oh, cool and then like some people responded most people didn't and yeah. i was like all right so then it was kind of like so now what do i just do the next step and they're like they're like yeah like you know did did everything so should i just I keep like, going yeah, yeah. And it was just kind of like you know where people like jumped around like jumped past i was like well do i just start over yeah they're like no do do your next step like continue going to treatment like it just yeah i don't know i just kind of like just felt like it was just like like making amends just felt like it was like the end. Mm. Like you did something terrible, you're working your way through that. And so now that you made this amend, it's like, okay, cool. Like life is done. Like that's yeah. it. Like things are going to be good now. And, and they weren't. Right. And then I was like, well, 
these people didn't respond. Yeah. Or what about the folks that I, and then I found out that you, you know, you're going to always be making amends. I was like, well, like, well, what then? So well, how do I continue to make these amends? Yeah. Because amends, in my mind, was just like, amends was supposed to be the end. Like, that was, you did the thing, you made the amends, and then you're done. Like, that relationship is finished, you move forward. Yeah. And it's like, nope. But if you didn't screw up, you would be so boring. You know what I mean? Like, it just, that's what life is. It's like trial and error. Like, go try, and then we'll figure it out from there, you know? But if you're accountable for your behavior and your intent is Mm -hmm. never to be hurtful, then you're growing, you know? So I think a lot of times we get... when we get sober, I want a parade, literally. Like, the people in my life that have loved me have kept my a roof over my head. They've kept food in my stomach. They've kept all of these things up, and they go to work every day. And then I get sober, and I'm like, I'm sober. I went to work for three whole days in a row. I would like a parade. You know what I mean? I just want everybody to be like, oh, you're just, oh, my gosh. You well, they've been so holding amazing. it down forever. Uh-huh. <laughs> That won't happen until you go and see other people that are like you, though. Yeah. No, I remember bringing my first, like, recovery assignment home that, like, like I just crushed my recovery assignment. Like, just look at this piece of paper. Look at everything I filled out. And, like, she was like, cool. And then turn the TV back on. Like, what the hell? Just do it at her. It's like, this is progress. And she was like, okay, cool, man. Yeah, I'm great. Like, <laughs> like, good, good for you. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, just, I was like, I was like man, that's recovery. Look how hard I'm yeah. working. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man, you just don't get it. You have <laughs> no idea the sacrifice <laughs> that I've made to be Poor sober anyone. today. Yeah. Oh. We're going to completely like disregard it. the last eight years yeah. that oh, you I, had to go through. <laughs> yeah, I Absolutely. I was like, no, I want something. Thanks for keeping life together. <laughs> That's how it starts, too. And then, yeah. like, after you've been sober for, like, five years, they're like, get over it. We <laughs> yeah, get it. Real. You're sober. <laughs> Holy God. You got to tell everybody, and, you know. Yeah. Let's get you a T-shirt. It's so. kind of like Scott <laughs> being a probation officer. I don't know. Oh, I'm so throwing him under the bus right now. <laughs> Every time we meet with someone, oh and I gosh. and I'm I'm so happy that he does it because people yeah. need to know yes. that he was a probation officer yeah. for twenty. He was in law enforcement for twenty years. Yeah. But every time we meet someone when we're doing something with F five, it's like, well, you know, I was <laughs> well, in law enforcement you, for yeah, twenty years, yeah. and it's like it makes me think of every time <laughs> when I first met someone. It's like, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been sober for about three years mm-hmm. or thirty days or whatever yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. and it's just like. And then when you're around people, <laughs> the same people a lot, and they hear you talk about it every time, or your Facebook, like, yeah. you know, they're just like, oh, my God, get up. We get it. Uh, you yeah. behave for 30 days. We've been doing it for, you know, 25 years yeah. or 30 years or something. So you're saying you were a douchebag for the 30 yeah. years before the last 30 days? <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. That's good. No, let's not talk about that. We're going to talk about I the know. last 30 days. That. That's right. Let's just focus on this. And really, you, you get sober so many times, you quit telling people you're sober because no. it's just like, well, I'm just going to disappoint you in six months anyway when I say right. that I, you know, whatever. Or you like the guy when someone comes in and is like, I'm five years sober. That's awesome. I'm 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you can't, they just can't, they can't handle oh, no. someone getting the attention for something they used to get attention yeah. for. Yeah. And so they only will talk about what they have more of. You can't just let a guy have his yeah, moment. Yeah, just give him his time. Yeah. Just give no. him It's happened moment. to me. I'll be like, hey, guys, I'm 10 years sober. And some guy will come out of left field and be like, I'm 25. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh-huh. Here's your yeah. humility. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem because you want your parade, but I want my parade bigger. Yeah, yeah for real. It's like, all right. Congrats. One day at a time, Ricky. <laughs> I've been doing it for 25 years. <laughs> just wait till you get to where I am. That's right. hard, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, notice me, don't notice me. I like when people, though, come in and say they're like, they're like, that's awesome. You're ten years sober, Adam. I just got thirty days, and it's like, that's well deserved. Yeah, yeah for real. You can talk about that all day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's make this about you. Right. Like that. I think we should just do that. But mm-hmm. we tend to. It's like, oh my god. Let's let's do a sobriety. <laughs> let's do a sobriety count up and yeah, like. It's like the humble brag. You know, it's like, yeah, you know ten years. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the ones still standing are a big deal. Yeah. yeah, I know. But I suppose if there's a guy that is like 50 years sober and he can't stand up, you know what I mean? I'm like, recognize. <laughs> He's not the real Slim Shady. Yeah. What? No, Never like mean. he can't stand up. I get it. I, I was just because saying. Because his legs yes, can't exactly. work. Yes, are you but with I get me? Like exactly okay. what you're saying. Like saying stand up. Yeah, okay. We're done. Well, this episode is over. We want to thank the F5 Project and the Ridge Recovery and Treatment Center for sponsoring our podcast. 
Oh, this has been. Uh, we want to thank Eminem yeah. <laughs> for making a song that she decided to use as a punchline to a joke. Oh, I've waited years for that. Season two, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have anything else you want to share before we close? Absolutely. No, not. that was a gem. <laughs> I have nothing to share. That's it. No more. Uh, uh, appreciate the Ridge F5 project. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you also if you get a chance, check out the podcast that's mm -hmm. coming out of the Department of Corrections called Chains to Changed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a couple of guys that are doing a podcast right out of their cell. Amazing, it is awesome. by the way. And yeah. the really cool. podcast that they did with, uh, or the episode they did with uh, uh, David Lee. That thing is, yeah. that episode Bald, is probably the yeah, most powerful go to that one podcast first, episode. Then, so yeah. if you want to find our podcast, just go to fiproject.org backslash podcast, and you'll be able to find both of them. Yep. Awesome. Kirsten, anything? No, no, that was, I'm really happy with myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one pretty Ricky. Uh, Co-host Kirsten Hoovenin, Adam Martin, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Everybody.